pancreation today or ancient times? Ancient times. Why? Because they had things in perspective. I don't know much of pancreation and it's kind of, I'm Greek. We're both too Greek, you know, proud. We love martial arts. a lot arts. of people don't know much about pancreation. Like, I only know from knowing you, seeing you, knowing what you do. I know a little bit of the history that they used to fight till the death. Is that is that a myth or no? Fairly, but there's only been recorded one death. I mean, there's a lot of you know modern okay. day like to uh, you know modern day scenarios like to put a little juice into it. Okay. But uh, there's only been a one death recorded ever in history, and all all events of ancient times are recorded. No Names way. of youth, of adult, of every games than a man, the uh, Delphi, the Olympian, all of them have been recorded down. Wait, they from the youth to the adults. So, okay, so, so my first question: the they could. I didn't know youth youth were doing pancreation. Obviously, they, I'm sure they, they were. The, the Spartans, as adults, did not participate in Olympic or any of the games in pancreation because they considered it a joke, a complete joke. They were okay. pure sad, and I totally understand it if you understand Spartan mentality. But they used to throw their youth in there to get them prepared to, for war. Okay. And the youth dominated, I mean, like totally dominated. And there's stories of Athenians going down to, uh, like Alcibiades going down and training with the Spartans. He was already a champion, Pancratius from Athens. And his game changed completely to the point where he went back to Athens. He, he dominated. It was a, a totally different mindset because, again, just like you know, as a, as a, as a martial artist, they prepared for their environment. Good point. This is why the guy went down when Alexander had finished a big campaign. I forgot which campaign it was. I'm trying to go yeah. back years of history now uh, of what I of what I've read. And he brought down. I think it was Arachion, and uh, he wanted to put an exhibition. It was one big, massive campaign. I think I'm not sure if it was the Indian campaign or after Gagamela, if I'm not mistaken. The top guy, I think his name was Arachion. And he asked him to fight against Alexander's top guy. This is the okay. craziest thing. Wow. This is why. This so is wait, why, this is recorded. This is not this mythology. Is this, is, this is history. Oh shit! Boom! This I've is never heard this. The first time I hear this. So he's got. So he asked the, the guy, "What does he want to carry?" And the guy goes, uh, "A loincloth and a stick is good for me." Stick. Now this is the other question, which maybe we can deal with another time. Yeah. How did you learn the stick? What stick? Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So these guys were known as hand-to-hand -hand, uh, experts. So, and the other guy was Alexander's top soldier, not top ranking guy, top soldier. He was known for being the one of the top killers. Killers, okay. Killers, killers. Fully armed. Arachion beat the living, they left him, didn't leave him for dead. Alexander got so embarrassed, and he was fully armed, fully geared. Okay. And Alexander got so embarrassed that he had sent a rumor out that night that he was going to take him, that he was going to take his life. So Arachion decided to commit suicide. No way. Leaving him a note saying, if you're not man enough to face me type of thing, yeah. I'd rather die with my own hand. And he killed himself. What a mindset they used to have. <laughs> Dude, it's crazy. So let me, ask, let, let me ask you, why did you, like, so how long you've been studying or training pancreation and why did you start? Good over 35 years. Um, I started because, I mean, I came out of the, uh, the old school of when the f martial arts boom was out, right? And everybody was doing everything. And, uh, you know, I came out of Park X, so Park X had a hierarchy. I'm 60 now. Yeah. I don't hold you. 48. Uh, 48. 48 uh, soon. Yeah. Close, 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 close. close. I'm, get, I'm getting, getting there, bro. I don't feel so bad anymore. The aches and pains are starting yeah. to come out. Yeah, they come out back <laughs> in the yeah. 55. Uh, I'll, I'll be that. Uh, as long as you're training, man, it's, it, yeah. it evens itself out, you know? So I, I came out of Park X, and in Park X, it was a time where everybody was doing something, or well, at yeah, least yeah. almost everybody yeah. was doing something. Everybody had a, you know, people are loyal to their whatever systems, but with the exception that if you're fighting out in the streets, and we already had little gangs happening, yeah, little that. street gangs happening. So when things are not going the way that you're being taught, you start looking for answers. And answers that some teachers, those teachers or those particular systems could not give. So we had other friends that used to go to boxing. So I went along with them to boxing. Why? Because, I mean, I kept going back, you know, with black eyes and fat noses and fat lips to the teachers and going, this and this happened. They had no it's question, crazy. no answer other than that. And I think they tried the best they, they could, but they just couldn't because they, they had maybe not been in opposition. We were constantly fighting every day. Yeah, growing up in Park X, back yeah. then was a little bit more. There was, a, there was none of this five on yeah. one. The guy that wanted you out, he wanted to know that he was the boss yeah. of you. It was a one-on-one -on -one thing. It was a pride thing back then. Today it's a different world. Yeah. You know? So 
And uh, that's what it was. I mean, you, I found myself on the ground many times, and and there's nothing scarier than being on the ground with a guy pummeling on top of you. Even if he doesn't know what he's doing, yeah. he's mounted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every kid knows how to mount somebody, right? Yeah, yeah. Even as kids, I got you, I pinned you. Yeah, yeah, good point, good point, yeah. And you're taking shots coming down on you, you're... You're now going back to your classes and your mind is going elsewhere. My teachers, uh, except for my, the last one, which I stayed with him for a while, and he, he became my mentor afterwards. He, Michael Quigley passed away a couple of years ago, uh, which is another interesting story for another time. But uh, this guy was very, very well-rounded. And he came out of a world, well but him too, he was very involved in that time out in the street. That's another story. Yeah. So th there was a relativity-based type of atmosphere at that school where other schools are just this is how it is yeah. if i went let's say i went to kokushin and we wanted to elbow spinning back elbows or spinning yeah, you know yeah. we weren't allowed to do yeah, that yeah. we weren't allowed to punch to the face so and my teacher used to say that's not the, the yeah, great yeah. way I, I i'm here with a black a black lip yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Straight it was true yeah so things started to get a little bit more a lot more a lot more questions started to, to happen inside and that's what led me. Did you find a back creation school? Nope. So how did you get in? Like, what did you? I heard it for the first time from my karate teacher, you know, about pancreation through Masoyama. And because uh, Masoyama had said, he goes, well, if it wasn't for the Greeks, we wouldn't have martial arts today, you know, because they had done pancreation and blah, blah, blah. I never heard the word uh... Uh, pancreation before. But if you take a look at it, that word is a common Greek, ancient Greek word. It's even in the Bible, in the, in the Greek scriptures, pankratos. God is called pankratos. Almighty. Almighty. So pancreation means all skills. Okay, all okay skills. good, good. I didn't know that. Okay. All skills. Pan, all. Kratos means strength, right? So, wow. but tr translated from Greek to English, not the same thing. Yeah. It means all skills, all strengths. What are your strengths? This is another misconception that a lot of people have today that was, was not a problem back in ancient Greece is that a pancreatus didn't go to a boxer to learn how to box, and he didn't go to a wrestler to learn how to wrestle. Yeah. Today, most grapplers can't figure that out, or most boxers can't yeah, figure right. that out. Just because we close our fists, it means that you know we should be doing boxing. But hold on a second, that's not my environment. Pancre uh, um, wrestlers and pancreatus were not allowed to train. Uh, sorry, wrestlers and boxers were not allowed to train with pancreatus. Pancreatus trained on their own. On their own. With artists, musicians. What? Artists and musicians, absolutely, dude, yeah. Artists, musicians, and Pancratius training soul, solo, on their own. None of these guys could train with them because, and they wouldn't go to think that you would go to a boxer to learn how to box, yeah. or a wrestler to, to learn how to wrestle, uh, was unheard of back then. It was considered like downgrading because none of those guys were familiar with the environment of the pancreas none of them okay. so if you want to look at the comparison that's a big conversation yeah, also, yeah. yeah. so but pancreas because also wrestling back then was identical in all areas you yeah. just couldn't you, you just the rules were simple you couldn't strike yeah you can small joint breaks yeah. Uh, you can twist the guy's neck off. Yeah. <laughs> you, can twist the guy's, you can mangle a guy up. You can slam him on his head. You can do a lot of things that you'll find in wrestling today yeah. and, and most grappling systems. But because of the ruling, it's, it differs totally. Whereas Pancratius, and because of the way they used to train and drill, they could go into a boxing match and they're known, there's known guys that have won in the Olympics, Pancratian, boxing, and wrestling. Yeah, yeah, because there's a little bit of everything. But uh, what were the rules? Like, you. I, is it true you could eye gouge? You can like were you in, able to do everything? Games, you were not allowed to eye gouge. You were not allowed to fish hook, and you were not allowed to bite. That means that, and here's a good, and here's a uh, uh, that's a very good question. Uh, to put things in perspective, because most people don't 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 realize that uh, the more you open it up, the, you have to look at it slightly different. Uh, okay, there's no eye gouging, there's no biting, but you're allowed to knock a guy into the throat. Oh. Absolutely. You're allowed, you know, cervical spine breaks. I mean, you can sit there and elbow a guy from the back and snap his neck. You're allowed yeah. total back uh, shots. You're allowed knee shots. Yeah. You're allowed You're allowed to stomp on the guy. I guess you were, not, you were allowed to... Oh, even the groin? Absolutely. Shit. I, I would think if you're not allowed the eyes, you wouldn't be allowed the groin either. Or no, you were allowed. The, the, because even then, back then, the Greeks wanted to keep it as close as possible the Athenians and those states, but at least to allow them to engage yes, okay. without having any major problems. This is where the Spartans had a hard time with them. They go, hold on a second. Everything I do 
is reactive and reflexive. Yeah. It's built into my yeah. neuromuscular responses. Yeah. So why would I want to take that out? Yeah. That's why they used to police the Olympics and made sure that there's no wars going on within that time, within, within the States, as opposed to as adults participating in what they would call pussy. <laughs> Pussy games. They used to call that in Greek pussy games. You know, it's for women. They go give it to them, I, and it was good reason because when you have instinct, instinct, yeah. you know what a bite. Yeah. You know, because a bite's not going to end the fight. No. I gouge is not going to end the fight. End you fight. Yeah. Well, yeah. Twenty five years as a doorman, you yeah. know, it's not. Yeah, yeah. But it will give you a five second window of opportunity. Exactly. A flinch response to strike something else. All the money, dude. Yeah. All the money, especially if you've got two guys or three guys. You got two guys. You got. Half the time to work on something. Yeah. And you're facing against double everything. Yeah. Double everything, angles a little cut. You need time while they have time. Yeah. So this is where the you know, this is where their mentality was. So it was in instinctive for them. So when you consider that I could break your neck, I can yeah. break your, I can break your uh, I can snap your throat, I can hit you in the I can elbow you, I can constantly punch you in the temple if I had you down. Yeah. To knee your spine, I mean like nonstop. Yeah, you know? like just you had was there was there a time when they would fight? Was no, it? there was no time limit. There was no, it was like you start until somebody either taps, gives up, or yeah. Was there a ref? The, the, yes, there was, and he had a whip. He had a branch. It's like no a way. branch to whip him because these guys would get out of control. They yeah. would. I mean, that's testosterone for you, right? Yeah, for sure. And they were skilled. They were all very skilled. And you also know that this guy next to you he's wants equal. to kill you. Absolutely. He's like he's not. And he's equal fully trained as you yeah. he's not he doesn't lock a little yeah. here like a, and here's another thing this is the killer that most people have a hard time trying to figure out you know trying to put into the mix is that there were no weight categories hence the skill it's the same thing yeah. it's the same thing if you're a bouncer right yeah there's yeah absolutely you're a bouncer you're not saying oh hold on a second dude i didn't <laughs> practice for you you're <laughs> your way <laughs> you're 30 to 40 you're like i remember going my head looking at the guy i'm like thinking i'm 170 180 the guy looks like it's 240 250 i'm like shit dude, I this was is gonna be yeah. I was, I was, don't look at me now and i'm like fucking i'm like 25 pounds overweight maybe a little more but i was at 180 back then yeah. i was a stick they saw me as a yeah stick. 180 this is me right now that's you what know, I'm, I'm at I'm trying to get down to that so <laughs> it's like I, I was a stick and you when you looked at but I think what it deterred everybody was that this stick was a piranha. Yeah. And that's what it was. That's what they're, they're apprehensive about. So when you're looking back then at, you know, a 240, a 250 guy with a 160 guy, that 160 guy had to think. But that didn't mean he was left, you yeah. know, he was... He you're, was you're just more, more calculated you in your to. movements. I, that I, that's, the, that's what it was for me working in the clubs. It was like, is real life. it's like, okay, I, I would train for it like when i worked security i would train all week because i would say friday saturday i'm somebody might try to stab me somebody might Absolutely. and i would train all week for that and i just could i knew i couldn't afford to make mistakes i had to be more calculated and more controlled and even if i felt overwhelmed or whatever would happen was I had to be in that present moment, get out of my head and just be ready to so like... Absolutely. You know, I've never drank once. Well, in 25 years, I was a, uh, I was a bouncer. I I never drank once on the job. And I remember the... No, sorry. My, I'm lying. Uh, I did drink once on the job. I had more than two shots on, and I felt a little lightheaded. And that night, we had a brawl. And I, I knew within me, I was off a little. And that off bothered me because, you know, you learn control in yeah, martial arts. Yeah. Back then, it was like all about control, meaning not control how much you're going to hurt a guy yeah. or hit a guy. Yeah. You self-control in the yeah, sense that I needed to, con to have my, my wits about me. Yes. My faculties needed to be there. And I noticed that a little, a little you know, two shots, I'm off. Yeah. One shot led to two shots. Yeah. <laughs> like, he said, enough's enough. But imagine having to fight guys that you uh, that are outweighing you by yeah. minimum 50 pounds. Yeah. You have to be a strategist. Yeah. And that's what it was about. Yeah. Now, imagine first UFC, first, second UFC. I remember those. But I remember. Equally those. skilled. Equally skilled, yeah. Not the one. But it, was, it, was, it was entertaining watching those. It was watching, entertaining. watching the boxer against the karate guy, the, the wrestler against the, like, the sumo guy, whatever. And you just see, and I mean, you saw the weight factor, all the, like, it was a factor. Like to say it wasn't, it was, it was always good. there, Absolutely. but. I mean, everybody came in with their own game, and then you saw what martial. Some martial arts would do better than others, but in other cases, somebody else had the advantage. What, what do you I think of UFC when you look at like how close would you compare? Probably not. When you look at pancreation, 
and you look at UFC today, like, like what, what do you think? Like MMA, yeah. Okay. Like, is there? I don't. I don't. Is there the, bridges in between? I, I think if the old guys, uh, if the old guys would be around today, they think that we, at some, and they looked at the 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 twentieth century. What overall, do you mean, old guys? You're talking about ancient Greeks. Ancient Greek? guys. Okay? okay. If they had to, they were to come back today, and look at us from outside of the box for the last hundred years. Forget before, just a hundred years, last hundred years. They'd say, okay, they are like, like somebody came in there and raped them. I mean, totally took off their clothes. They're naked in terms of skill. Yeah. Like you have a piece here, a piece there, a piece here, and a piece there. There's like one pie that just went into, shattered into pieces. A glass shattered into pieces. And then at some point, uh, now they looked at a, a wheel. Let's look at a wheel shattering into pieces, right? And then... At some point, some guy went and said, uh, uh, they've been trying to put that wheel together, but they've been, they've been doing it upside down and, 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 you know, each holding a piece of that wheel with total pride, you know, like, yeah. uh, loyalty. My part of that wheel is, but it's not a complete wheel, you know, and then slowly, slowly they started putting the wheel, trying to put Pete's the wheel together again. And, and they would probably say, why would you do that? Why would you take, why would you split the wheel in so many pieces? And now you're trying to piece it together, but you're putting it in the wrong areas. Mm. Oh, okay, here we go. Oh, okay, something's happening. But why would you want to do that? You know, they'd say, but okay, let's say there's a, there was a gap in terms of the last few hundred years where, you know, that's that type of entertaining sport was not around yeah. because it was mostly just swords. Yeah, good point. Okay, so let's say because of those reasons it was not around, although it was somehow still around because it's still old pictures of old drawings of 15th, 16th, 17th century uh, of these things still happening, you know? So I think if they would look at it today, they'd say, okay, but but I think they're just, they're, they've got the wheel connected, but the glue is not there not yet. There. So we're not reinventing. I never said I, my opinion is not very popular because uh, why I love I love I, I I've always uh, I mean that to me is like watching UFC and I like watching the higher caliber guys because okay. uh, I have noticed that uh, and this is what I tell my students I go if um, if you're if you're doing Thai for example I see it with a few I'm I'm not throwing the baby out with yeah, 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 yeah. I'm I'm just making a a little generalization. Uh, I still like watching the higher end guys. I used to love to watch a few years back where the guys were like the Silvas. Okay. You're looking at highly skilled guys and not just with their legs and hands, their timing, their ability yeah, to yeah, read your yeah, timing yeah, yeah. was just playful. But you know, cockiness can get in the way and you yeah. can get your shins. Yeah. <laughs> he did cocky. Yeah. So even it happens to the best. But their level of skill in terms of overall who well put together was there. There were some guys that could really, like Guido, what was his name, Guido or something. Uh, anyways, there were some guys that could really put it together there. But I've noticed that on the whole end, you take guys, let's say, for example, that, uh, and I teach my kids uh, over here, uh, my kids, my, my students, uh, kind of uh, little exercises, mental and visual exercises. And I go, okay, so next time, you see, everybody there does some form of tie. Everybody there does some form of boxing mm. in, those, in the MMA gyms. Everybody there does, and I'm not slandering anybody. Yeah. Don't look yeah. at I ain't slandering anybody. Dude, you're, don't get, either way, you're gonna get somebody slandering you and it's all good. Like I mean it's, it's part good. of the yeah. game. Uh, I'm trying to keep it in perspective. Yeah. You know, but if you prove me wrong, prove me yeah. wrong. But uh everybody's done some boxing, everybody's done some some kicking, some type of tie. Yeah. Everybody's done so you think you take a look at a boxer and you know, when shots come in, his weaving and slipping abilities, but not just slipping and weaving. Slipping, weaving, and counter abilities yeah. are flawless. Yes, I agree. You look at a Thai K1 boxer, yeah. and their ability to check and counter is bang on. You look at an MMA guy, and 1% of them can do any one of that. Yeah, that's so true. So to me, where, where, that's where I have a... a so I, you, it, it's, 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 it's turning into slugfest. It, it, it's interesting guys. because I, like, I, I alternate who I train with. I'll do like, you know, four to six months boxing four to six months wrestling, four to six months jiu-jitsu, uh, four to six months uh, MMA. And, and I'll do all, the, like now I want to I take up Sambo. I've never done Sambo. But then I train them individually. Then I try to train them together. Then I try. And it's like, I don't excel 100% at one. I'm good a little bit at all of them. 
But I find for, for self-defense, for the street, you need a foundation of an overall. You need to know how to Absolutely. stand, go to the ground, stand up, strike. Absolutely. Uh, so I think, I think that's... I think It's got to be instinctive. Yeah. It's got to be re reflexive. That's the key to basically everything. It's the ability for you to instinctively and reflexively react in the appropriate way. So it's interesting because when I was doing a lot of MMA, so I was training privately with Davis Dos Santos, just MMA, MMA. And then I was catching myself, even when I was teaching self-defense, to go for a takedown, which is the last thing I want to do for me in the street is go to the ground. And again, factors, multiple attackers, weapons, but you're going to train the way you fight. So if you start, if, yeah, if you start doing that, you're going to start reacting that way. So then I was like, shit, I need to switch it up because I'm starting to get those, those habits, which there's, again, good elements, but I don't want to get attached to anything. That's the way I, I think that's a that's 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 the right approach to do things. I, I think uh, you, you have to be true to your environment yeah. and the reality of the environment. Good point. And the minds the mindset for that environment is especially when you're dealing. I look at my kids and I go, listen, you want to compete? That's great. Well, then we'll we'll work on the competition. But yeah. our our training and drilling is constant every night. Yes, yeah. the same. Boom yeah, I see it. I see it. Yeah, you know so. But what, I, what, well, do you train them mostly for competition or self-defense or street life, street, street. life, yeah. life, life? I have girls over here with nails. I have I have a, an amazing bunch of girls over here. A, a lot of them I've had since they were very young, and now they're in their teens. Some of them have gone to adults, so I've had the ability to watch them grow through their very their different phases and seeing them become from little kids to these women that are coming in there. They're training their asses yeah. off with nails like yeah. nails. And I go, it's nice that you have nails, but let's let's move it from an aesthetic point of view to a functional. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I like you that. don't know what you have yeah. on you, and it's pretty legal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas I can't walk around with two knives in my hands, yeah. you know, in the street. Yeah, and uh, so, and we use that in that. So I alter a lot of the exercises around that so good. they can understand time, risk, say a risk ratio. Yes. So what is the risk factor and the ratio of time, a risk and safety ratio? between me and that person in front of me or two people in front of me and that's basically what they learn you're absolutely right man i mean it's like if why when i was teaching guys in the military and i'd go from military base to military base years ago uh they were especially <clears throat> you know when the ufc came in the graces were huge and my question was when i when i go to these places but why would i want to pull guard yeah in the military? yeah uh dude i mean like i lost the, the instinctively yeah. In no time, no I got I got bashed for a video that I made on that, dude. No, because I just I, I just said like it's lim like the concept is good, but it's limit it's limit it's limitless. In, uh, there's limits in terms of what you can do in the street. Common but people sense. took it like I was bashing. I'm in the street. I'm with one guy, just me and him. Yeah, no, no yeah, flags. yeah. I happen to wind up over there, super duper. Uh, no, yeah. If I know, I know how to get yeah. out. If I don't, my lot. Yeah. But you're talking about military now pulling guard. And I go, never in the annals of history yeah. has there ever been recorded a time in historical pieces that say, if you can't do any, you know, the best place to do it, the best thing to do is grab your guy, pull guard on him, take him down, get him in between while you're on your back, yeah, man, I make, I, you know, and the other guy spearing you from his yeah, buddy, spearing yeah, you from on top. No I mean, sit there and do that nowhere yeah. in history. So when I hear guys like going, well, you're yeah, pulling guard is a good thing. Uh, where? where? In your basement? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, with your buddies? Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. I, in the gym? Absolutely. Now nobody in the UFC wants to pull yeah, guard. Yeah, yeah, nobody. Yeah, yeah. Because you got a guy on top of you who's equal to train. Oh, oh, oh. And he, even that, now, now you, know, you see just hammer fist coming down. It's not even as, you know, you, you see some, like, imagine you had the UFC. Like, I headbutt a lot. I like to headbutt. I like, you start, imagine you were in the clinch and you could headbutt. You can strike. Remember the first up. pride? The first few prides? They were allowed to headbutt back then. That was, that was absolutely amazing. I mean, they, the Japanese always tried to come close. And this is where they used pancreas instead of pancreation, because out of respect for the word being Greek, they didn't want to use that. But they were ahead of their time in terms of that, in terms of the martial arts, because they understood the 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 wholeness of it, right? The totality of it and the need for the totality of it. Uh, it was headbutts were second nature yeah. in the pride back then. It was it was beautiful. Down kicks, up kicks, yeah. elbows flying from yeah. the top. This it was good. You weren't allowed to. You weren't allowed to eye gouge yeah. and bite. Yeah. And fish hook. It was all very very yeah. close to it, and a few other things like you weren't allowed to 
the joints. Yeah, you were allowed yeah, to break yeah. these and stuff like that. But it was close. That second nature for you yeah. is going to count. Oh, 100%. Because most people don't expect. Yeah, my no, son, absolutely. my son, I was wrestling with him for fun. He went, boom, and he went to headbutt me because I, and his head like came in. I go, you would have freaking busted my nose. And he literally came in and grabbed me. So those moves, again, it, again, I tell people, what are you training for? Where's right? your, what's your environment? What's your environment? What are you absolutely. training for? Absolutely. I mean, I remember, uh, I remember once as a, a one brawl we had when I was working at September's and uh, I had long hair. I always had long hair and uh, most of the time I had long hair. And back then, everybody wore a black overcoat. It was just bouncers wore it and almost everybody wore it and every gangster wore it and everybody gangster wannabe wore, you know, those, those, those overcoats type of thing, you know? You I, had one, I had one too. I, had one. Yeah. I don't know why. It was like the in thing, yeah. right? So uh, everybody looked the same. So you had to like literally figure who your friend was by the way he walked, the yeah. way he moved from the rear, right? So I had long hair, but I was a lot of other guys that had long hair. And I remember as I'm rushing out on one guy, now we've taken it to the street. Somebody grabs my hair from the back. And all of a sudden, I went from a, a forward move to a backward wow. pull. And it was a hard pull because it was November time. We had, we, it was, it was raining. It, 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 there was a frost on the street. And I wound up on my, I wound up on my back fast, but I, I was running so fast that not only did I wind up on my back, he lost my hair and I went underneath the front part of a car. So to show you how quick that could have yeah. turned bad, somebody could have just started stomping okay. on me. I literally had to pull myself out and, and get up because there were so many yeah. things happening. Yeah. There was like a whole bunch of people. Uh, mostly it was out of towners. Yeah. Back then it was Bostonians. Yeah, it was I remember. Men, right? <laughs> So Bostonians used to come in. We used to we used to like get prepared for yeah, that, yeah, yeah. for that, you know. Especially the long weekends and stuff. The you long, know, they're yeah, coming yeah, like yeah, oh, yeah. shit. You know, like something. Crazy. Yeah. These guys are drinkers. They're taking down our our drink. We say, hey, this isn't your 0.1 percent alcohol. Yeah, but yeah. This is five, six, seven percent, right? So, and it was scary to think how fast I went. Yeah. I turned over and got back on my feet again because of the fear of the soccer kick. Yeah. Or somebody yeah. stomping down on me, which was happening every time. Yeah. And I, I, something that you said before, you know. Uh, the need to identify your reality, yeah. rea your, your, your environment and reality, because reality, and this is an un another overused word, man. It's like real reality takes precedence. Yeah. Your reality will show you the reality, not uh, my reality. Yeah. My reality in my school over here is I walk around with a king's... Yeah. Uh, you know, crown on and that's that, but that's not reality in real life. Yeah, that's subjective course. reality. Objective reality means I'm out there and reality will show me where my faults are. Yeah, so point. this is where the old Greeks used to say, the old Greeks used to say, you know, um, under pressure, you rise to your, yeah. to your level of training, but you can also use it the other way. Yeah. Under pressure, you also fall to the level good of your good. training. So it works both ways, right? So that's just reality. Reality will point out to you what was delusional yeah. and what is real. Yeah. So give me the headbutts and the ability to, to be able to maneuver instinctively well from here to up, yeah. you know, and I'm good with that as opposed to doing things that are not constructive you know that'll yeah. that'll that'll raise the risk of my of my safety yeah you know and the ability for us to go home you have a kid i have kids yeah. also i have you know you have a life you you know you're the type of guy also that like myself, you avoid all. Yeah, hundred percent. We we pay. We I'm we all we have paid our dues, man. It's yeah, like, and that's why I tell my kids, yeah. we paid our dues. Yeah. Now it's your turn. And unless I feel, unless I feel my life is in absolutely, danger, absolutely, absolutely. You know what I mean? But I think knowing, having the knowledge to be able to work that way, I think is what I find that is rich for us. Yeah. To pass out, I I don't think I take anything back because we learned to such an extreme extent yeah. of drill, 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 yeah. and I think. And the back then. I I don't know if it was the same. We used to train. I remember when I used to train 25 years. We used to be like, you, you, uh, get in the ring. And it was like, I'm fighting this guy who's 6'2", uh, Serdan, a Serbian guy. He's like 250. I'm like, okay, put on the gloves and blood everywhere. Nobody, no headgear. We, I don't know how it is today, but I think it was a little bit crazy back then, even when we used to do scenario training. One helmet, scenarios, full out, and 
there was always injuries. Pressure, pressure testing. Yeah, yeah. pressure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Pressure testing. But it's very high risk to train like this, especially when you're doing these type of scenarios and hits. But like, it's always hard. How do you find that balance between saying, okay, we're going to do full out scenarios. It's going to be intense, but still kind of control it. Yeah. That's always been a, that's always been a, a you don't want to lose, you don't want to lose students. Absolutely. You don't want the parents to come and say, why didn't my kid Absolutely. get a concussion? You that's know a, what I mean? That's, a, that's an excellent point. That's the hardest thing to that's do. That's an excellent point. And you know something that in itself is uh, also uh, a cause to, to re, you know, to, to actually work on, on, yeah. a, on a regular base. Right. So I understand that very well. And like yourself, I come from a, you know, street gangs back then. There's, there's none of this jumping in. So it's, you either shut your mouth yeah. or if you opened your mouth, you have to prove yourself to that guy. If you didn't, uh, shut your mouth and everybody knew that you, yeah, were, just, you were just a, a, a babbling okay. chicken, yeah. you know? And that was that. So you literally had to stand up. And because we used to train as hard, now you're trying to find a medium, yeah. a happy medium, right? So because I also know that I seen the extent into which no insult to anybody, yeah. but as a, as somebody who's in the system for a long time, in the industry, sorry, yeah. in the industry yeah. for a long time, I've seen differences. And because I've had the school yeah. with tens and tens and th of thousands of people coming in and out and in and out, I've seen certain things over the last 35 years, right? So I've seen changes that have gone from, okay, let's say, forget the extreme that we went yeah. through. Now we're going to the other extreme. I agree. Total, like total yeah, 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 yeah. Like I recently had a guy that came in from a couple of well-known gyms. You know, he came in. He had a hard time with our first twenty minutes of our workout, our drilling. Young kid, great, beautiful at attitude on this kid. He wanted to learn. The kid lives up in Mirabel, but he wanted to come over here and try it out. Yeah. And uh, he really, he really, he enjoyed the workout, liked it. And then we had a conversation afterwards with the guys uh, with him and I, he goes see that's the problem I, i'm having he goes most things are all combination oriented and there's no drilling anymore yeah. so but i still need to put across to my students that if something happens this is real pressure yeah. this is the real thing yeah. so it, what happens to you good or bad comes back to me good point so how do i find a how do i find a way to be able to put the pressure on them yeah. that age appropriately Good point. of course yeah, yeah to make sure that and there are my adults my there's some of my some of my adults they just they're in for the yeah workout yeah, absolutely yeah. you know and then there's a few others that say yeah let's do it you yeah know, I, I you pair them together you're like okay and that's they're ready. fantastic yeah. and they go at it and they bruise each other up and that's fantastic and they still do it with a certain amount with a lot of respect for each other yeah. but they understand that there needs to be a little bit more that's voluntary yeah I agree. that's the whole thing that's but as kids now how do you bring the kids up from a young age so that they can feel confident enough to be able to deal with the unpredictability out yeah. there, but at the same time in here, know that they can dish it out, take it also without getting hurt yeah, and without that, taking it bad, yeah, without looking at it negatively. Yeah. That's always been a sensitive line. I found ways around that, but I've always noticed that I've had to, I've had to do the disclaimer at yeah. least a week ahead of time a constant yeah, every yeah, night yeah, disclaimer yeah. and i've got amazing kids yeah. with amazing parents yeah. the disclaimer that says you the first thing i come up with is go there's going to be a lot of crying in the next week there's going to be a lot of tears in the next week there's going to be a lot of heartache and a lot of disappointment frustration but you know what i go that's good yeah, yeah. it's part of the game well this is where you got to figure out what works and what doesn't work. absolutely even me like that. when i do knife defense and i do like even when i train law enforcement i drill and they tell me we don't train like for me it's all drills and it's the best way to i develop drills i develop drills that kind of replicate what you might face i break them down each like a puzzle and again, and I keep at the end, I'm like, okay, now we could add the striking could add because as soon as you start adding that higher risk of injury. Absolutely. So I drill every piece, but they're still rolling. They're still fighting. They're still working on a specific skill with real energy or else what are you getting? Like, I don't like this. Okay. Come at me here. One, two, and three. And this is what, this is the biggest Absolutely. mistake. And I see a lot of systems do that. You know, we were talking with a couple of, uh, with uh, some of the guys, a couple of night, a couple of, uh, was it Friday? And, uh, one of my friends here, uh, a dad who's got his two sons over here is training and everybody here knows i mean the, i'm screaming at everybody over here right so there's always a pressure 
being put on there. But even with the kids, they know where I'm coming from. Yeah. Whether it's cynicism, yeah. sarcasm, yeah. you know, whatever, they know where I'm coming at. Yeah. And I think everybody's seen that. a lot of people that see my videos. Some will see it for the first time. I turn around and say, "How dare you speak yeah, like that?" Yeah, yeah. But, you know, parents are sitting there going, "Yeah." You know, at, so, at the end, they want they want to toughen up their kid and absolutely the sense, not be a bully, but be able to at least defend themselves. When so, they see more parents wanting that, absolutely uh, today. Yeah. Ab more, so, more well, yeah, the ones that were raised like us. Yeah. Know, there are a lot of them, and I have to say that I'm blessed to have a lot of those type yeah. of parents. Is it that parent there, that particular guy turns around and goes, goes, if we had a low, I mean, I have, I've come up with a lot of different logos for our school, you know, take your life into your hands before it slips through your fingers and stuff like yeah. that. And he came up and he goes, screaming at you since 1975. That's, that's actually good. <laughs> screaming at you from since 1975, you know, and we cracked up because that's exactly what it is. And these kids understand, and that's a beginning part, a beginning of facing, of understanding that this is what we do and I'm tr we're trying to get back yeah. to the need for the reality of what's out there happening today. I've had here uh, one girl attempted uh, attempted abduction, oh, one of my own. And I had that week, I had I I'd even posted it as a warning for others to let them know, you know, that we were talking. We always talk about these things and it actually happened. And the poor girl and family was shocked. She fought it off, well, you know, which she, is. Yeah, 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 she fought it off. She like she freaked and panicked and fought it off and then it ran. Yeah. I'm talking about 12 year old girl here. Yeah. Not a 17, 18, 12 year old girl. And the reality is there. So our job is how do you how do you find that milieu? Yeah, that's what you know, is. where they need to feel that the confidence they have is not is not delusional. It's not false. I, as I tell it gives you a false belief. Like you do all this training. And it's all this theory, it's all this striking, and then when it happens the first time out there... You can Anthony yeah. Robbins anything, yeah, but yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, that emotional, you know, feel good that minute yeah. uh, is good, but it's not the emotional feel good that'll get you out of a scenario. It is that reflexive, reactive, yeah, yeah, instinctive react that'll happen in the way that you'll move yeah. because you drilled it. Yeah, That's absolutely. confidence in order for you to snap, you know? So, and this is what I see from other schools that we were saying before I go, a lot of the schools today are competing with I think this is where the martial arts has gone. And I think that's because of the United States. Yeah. Everything comes out of the United States. Yeah. You know? The marketing, you know, media is like everybody is like, uh, you know, let's tone things down because now soccer and hockey and basketball is taking away our students. Well, hold on a second. That's not, we, we don't yeah, compete yeah, yeah, with yeah, them. Yeah, good point. Why should we? We're not competing with them. We're teaching people. And I believe that this is why a lot of the schools have toned down a lot. In terms of the training, and you have kids that are coming over here, you know, five, six, seven years, 12 year old black belts. Yeah, yeah. Five, six years, they still can't pull a side kick. Yeah. They have a hard time doing a round kick. Yeah. They have a hard time rolling. So, and I go, well, what was the five years? Yeah. I mean, it's because the class was more entertaining yeah, than yeah. it was what it should be. Yeah. Now, I don't know what to tell you, Nick, man. I mean, I've, you know, people say times change. No, people change. Time changes. Time, yeah, yeah. time is going Point forward. Yeah. It's people that change. It's attitudes that change. I think it's what we see, you know, coming out of the movies where we want more flash and more this as opposed to reality. But I do also see... For you, it's probably hard. around. You, two, you do more groups. I do more private. So I talk to them. I'm like, what do you want from your training? Absolutely. How yeah. far? How hard? What is your overall objective your we want to get? What's your goal, right? And if he tells me, I want to go full blast, okay, let's go. I had a guy who came from L.A. We went to the warehouse. I had two guys, helmets, gears in the elevator. Bam! The elevator was like, looked like it was going to freaking, guy smashing, going flying. He did all this training. He freaked on the couch, on like in the car, outside the car, in the back. And it was the whole dynamics changed from just being. Absolutely. And again, you figure out what actually works, what doesn't work pretty fast. Tell me a little bit. You're also a yeah. Hall of Famer, right? Mm -hmm. So tell me about that. How many? Uh, three. Uh, one in the States, one in Europe. Uh, uh, two in the States and one in Europe. Uh, and they kind of like, it was just a nice way of uh, saying that, uh, you know, being acknowledged by your, peer, by yeah, your peers. Yeah. I was nice. It was a nice thing. It was, I still, you know, I still look back and I go, yeah, you something. know, there's, every day is, a, is a, you know, monotony kicks in, monotony kicks in. Once in a while, I look at it, I look at the uh, the plaques and I go, 
Saw your oh, yeah, that's right. I did that. That's, that's cool. Okay. Who was your biggest inspiration in terms of martial arts? Who, would, who do you go back and like look at and be like, wow, this is really... Tough question, man. Um, is there one <laughs> at that... Well, my last Watching teacher was a, was, a, was a mentor, Michael Quigley. Uh, he mentored a lot of us. He was uh, somebody we looked up to. Uh, we were a bunch of misfits out of Park Extension. I mean, he had the worst of the worst. The worst of the worst, you know. And he made the worst of the worst into fathers, businessmen, wow. gentlemen. The worst of the worst. And he and these guys came out and they had, and you know, com all gathered together type of thing. And there was a type of school where everybody allowed was allowed to express their yeah. their 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 skills so it was i'd say the first time where we were in a school where we were allowed you can almost consider it pancreation mma and while we still were in on a traditional sense doing some traditional uh you know uh martial arts when it you know when it came to sparring, I mean, we had a judoka, we had others that were wow. coming. So you, from, so you guys were all yeah, sparring fair, with each absolutely. other, picking up from everybody. Wow, it was absolutely yeah. amazing. But I think that the biggest inspiration was our culture, yeah. our culture, Nick, our culture, because we were taught our culture and we were taught to to dig in our culture. When you look at what our culture has done, we were always a small. We were always a David, always a David looking at a Goliath, yeah. always. And when you consider some of the incredible things that our cultures have done, and that's just to start. Then you hear others that speak about our culture and the heroism of yeah. our culture. Different. Alexander, Leonidas, Pericles, and the lesser known of the modern Kolokotronis, yeah. yes. these are the guys that had no weapons, no, you know? Yeah. So forget Alexander, you went in there with, with entire troop, you know, entire un, entire yeah. army. Mind you, they were outnumbered 101, yeah. but Kolokotronis, Makriyanis, Papaflesas, and these guys... They fought like with... They had nothing. They were underdogs going to the fight. Underdogs going to the fight, and they were considered the new Spartans, the new yeah. Thermopylae, they were considered that fight back then, right? The fight of, uh, of liberation for the Greeks for us. In Europe, in the European newspapers, they had the, they, they termed it as the new, the modern, the new Thermopylae. Right. That's basically what, but we had nothing. We they used to make gunpowder out of uh, chicken, uh, chicken shit. Yeah. Imagine, and nobody knows about these guys. So the, our culture in general, you know, was, uh, was a huge inspiration and uh, for me it still is and uh, the Spartan the Spartan way of life people think of him as some brutes you know yeah. it's like brutes it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a, I think it's a mindset it's a mindset and I love that mindset and I raise my I raise my son with that mindset integrity be kind be strong learn how to defend in yourself a world with yeah, yeah of like integrity. yeah it's like you and know still I'd still rather teach him that way than to, you know, to have them feel, you know, to have my kids feel like they're entitled to whatever. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And be chaotic within their brains, you know. I think that's the biggest inspiration. Uh, for me, it was those, uh, it still is till today. And uh, until I die, I guess. Awesome, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Aris, it's been a long time. We say we've been doing time, man. Do it again, dude. Uh, Aris, where can, they, where can they find you if people have? Uh, put your link in the comment in box. Canada, uh, Put the link over there too. I'll put the link in the comment comment box. Pancreation Canada. Uh, pancreation uh, pan pancreation Canada dot com. Yes. Pancreation Not Canada. www. Pancreation Canada dot com. Pancreation with a K. Uh, if you're in the uh, Montreal Laval area, fifteen thirty Curie Labelle, corner souvenir. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed this episode. I we'll hope you, you like screaming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>